We have been traveling the rich fertile lands of Kenya, far and wide, across the highlands and lowlands of this beautiful country, talking to farmers wherever we go. We want to give them the help and knowledge they need to improve their farming methods, increase their income, and turn around their farms into good business for the future. Join us and our experts on this journey and share their families' experiences as they make the changes. Karibu to Shamba Ship Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shepherd. We are here in Makueni, about 90 kilometers from Machakos town. And I have an umbrella to protect myself from the sun and the heat. And I have my umbrella just in case it rains. It's not going to rain, it's, it's hot. I was told it's going to rain. No. I see. So this means that this place has unpredictable weather. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we can do. We are going to be shaping up the Shamba of Joseph and Angela. Angela, how long have you lived on this farm? For about 25 years. I live with my children and a husband. Your children and husband? Yeah. And I saw a and little grand, boy here. Grandson. What are the main problems are you facing? The main problem is water, rain. Water? Uh, yeah, rain. Oh, what, what is wrong with the rain? Sometimes it becomes a lot of, of rain, sometimes very little. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's oh, also unpredictable, you yeah, don't know whether it's going to be yeah. high or low. Yeah. How is your soil? Is the soil good? Not very good. We'll get you an expert to help you and also advise on water harvesting. I'll be happy. Yes, and also advise you on the crops, especially the drought resistant crops. This is a marginal area that has unreliable weather. So you may get rain or sometimes none at all. But when it does rain, it's heavy and can wash crops away and cause soil erosion. Also, as it's so hot and dry, the soil dries out as well as damaging crops. Angela and her good friend and neighbor Agnes are involved in a weather research program that has been established by ICRISAT, working with Kari in Makueni. It aims to help farmers adapt to climate change by understanding the weather. We have an expert here to tell us more about it. Mr. Kenyua. Yes, but Good to see you. Fine. You are the expert in climate and weather changes. That's true. <laughs> and I understand you're doing some research around here. Yeah. What kind of research is this? In fact, what we are doing, we are trying to establish the, the, the impact of climate change in this zone by also giving the farmers information on, 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 on the probability of, 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 the, of, the, of getting rains and or not getting rains. Mm -hmm. We are also researching on forecasting. We also, we, we also got, got the basic, basic information from the farmers. Uh -huh. So in the, in the long run, the objective of the study is to establish whether farmers, when they get the information on forecasting, are they benefiting from that information? Uh -huh. We are also trying to establish the best ways to, to, to get information to the farmers. Is about the, the weather. About the weather. And forecasting And it. forecasting. So you want to change maybe the farmers to become weathermen? <laughs> Not really. We are trying to, 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 to advise them so that uh -huh. they can take advantage of, mm -hmm. the, of, the, of the weather change and improve on the production. Is it working? It will work and it is working. The yeah. reason being this, this zone is really a food insecure zone. Yes. And if, the, if we don't change with the climate change, yes. then we will be disadvantaged. Wow. especially in terms of food security. Now, ladies, tell me, have you benefited from the research? By when we went at training, we learned so much as to prepare our shambas by having enough to, so that we can plant, mm -hmm. by making terraces on our shambas. Mm -hmm. How have you benefited yourself? I have known that preparing the land before the rain starts, mm -hmm. the soil will be loose and I have known about crop rotation. Wow, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Julius, what are the main problems that the farmers face due to climate change around these parts? We have several challenges in terms of climate change. Initially, you find that several years back, the issue of rains, the rains were well distributed and also it was timely. The main challenge here is poor distribution. Sometimes you can find even the, the, the amount of rains a bit high but the distribution is poor. In that case, now you find that the farmers are really experiencing food insecurity due to poor productivity of land. While Tony is finding out about the local training in climate change, I'm talking to an expert about farming in this particular region. 
So I hear you're the expert in uh, harvesting water in dry areas. Yes, I am. Yes. I've been doing this one uh -huh. and assisting these farmers to harvest water in trenches. Mm -hmm. And so I've come around to inspect this work of Joseph's mm -hmm. that he has been doing and collecting water in trenches for the purpose of growing these uh, fruit trees, and especially that the rains are very little in this area. Right. Yes. So what is your assessment? What did you think? You can see he's harvesting water from the run of there. Right. And then the water is being used for the purpose of growing and uh, uh, of these uh, particular plants. Mm -hmm. So we encourage that the trenches be a bit wider, around right. four feet and maybe around two feet deep. So that we can collect a lot of water mm -hmm. and a lot of silt, which the silt will add to soil fertility. Right. And the fertility will uh, bring nutrients to these plants. So all he has to do is just dig, dig... Uh... To enrage the trench mm -hmm. and dig a bit deeper to collect more water and the more silt, mm -hmm. which will form the fertility of this uh, soil. You can see the soil is not very fertile. Yeah, right. And uh, this kind of trees needs a lot of nutrients right. for development. Well, Joseph, you've done very well, but you could do better with this new information. Yeah, if, uh, I will try and uh, widen the knee, the trenches. Joseph and Mr. Benson get to work to widen the trenches in preparation for when the rains do come. This will benefit all the trees planted in the trenches. The fruit trees like oranges, we do better with improved trenches. But Mr. Benson has some more useful advice for farmers in dry land areas. Ah, what do you have for us here? Oh yes, I have these mud papas trees. We uh -huh. call them mud papas because they have several uses. Right. This is Grivelia. Mm -hmm. It's a very good plant, especially in this dry area. It is used as a shed, mm -hmm. uh, fuel wood. It is also supplies some feeds for animals, especially during prolonged drought. Mm -hmm. And it is also improves on soil fertility. Right. Uh, we also have this one. We call we call it Moringa oleifera. It is medicinal. Mm -hmm. Right. It's vegetables. Mm. It also improves soil fertility because it is nitrogen fixing. Right. And it is also fodder for the animals, especially the pods. And again, we also have this one. We call this one uh, Melia species. Very good for timber. It really? makes very wonderful furniture. Mm. It is drought resistant. When do I need to plant these trees? These trees are very good for you, especially this area. You can mm -hmm. get firewood, you can get shed, yes. you can also get some feed for your animals, yes. and it can improve soil fertility, especially this your soil, which is not very fertile. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has some soil erosion control effect. Yeah. And uh, these trees do not need a lot of water. And mm -hmm. bearing in mind this area is uh, moisture stressed, yeah. we really need these mud purpose trees. Mm -hmm. Again, they are also good for animal feeds, yeah. especially this one, which we call Gruvelia. Mm -hmm. The leaves are used to feed animals, especially at a time like this. Yeah. For planting trees, you need a hole which is two feet wide by two feet deep. Mix the topsoil with manure. Fill the pit and leave a gap at the top of about 6 inches. Water the soil in the pit. Dig a small hole to plant the tree. Don't forget to remove the plastic wrapping. Plant and surround with soil. Then water again to make sure the plant has lots of water. How long will it, will it take to be a big tree? Mm -hmm, that's a and, good question. And uh, how will I be watering it? Mm -hmm. If you want firewood, within four to five years to be ready for firewood and even good shed. But if you want it for timber, you'll wait a bit longer, maybe six, seven to eight years. About watering, like now it is very dry. Water it after every two days. So, check the tree every two days and give it enough water to keep it growing. While Naomi has been busy planting trees, I'm trying to find Angela and Agnes. No, I'm there. Oh. 
What wow. is it? I'm looking for the ladies and I can't find them anywhere. Well, they've gone to the weather research for training. The weather research station? Then what are we doing here? Let's go join them. Okay! Come on. We make our way to Curry Research Center. Here, the farmers are trained about the different weather patterns to help them to be able to plan their farming calendars better. The information given creates awareness on climate change. Hey, ladies. Yeah. Did you learn anything? Yeah, yes, we have, we have learned. learned. Uh -huh. yeah. It's good to see you here. Yeah. What's the most important thing that you learned? We have learned how the crops that you can plant. Mm -hmm that can resist low rains. Ah, uh, crops that can resist drought. Yeah. yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. There's still so much land. I need to look around and then we'll see you at the farm. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. The center also carries out studies into the multiplication of seeds and other interesting research work. So, what's this now? This is now what we call our weather station. It's uh -huh. now we collect our data yes. in terms of research. This is your weather station? Weather station. Wow. Can we go in? Yeah, welcome. Just come in. Wow. Yeah. The condition of the atmosphere is determined by many variables. For example, temperature, humidity, rain, wind, and sunshine. A weather station is where these elements are observed, measured, and recorded. A rain gauge is used for measuring rainfall. Wind vane is used to determine the direction of the wind. And the anemometer measures the speed of wind. This is called the Stevenson screen. It is used to house the hydrometer and the thermometers for measuring temperature. Wow. A crystal ball. You could tell me my future. I can tell you your future, Naomi. You'll be shipping shambas. But, but seriously, what is this? This is a, a gadget which, which is used to measure the intensity of sun. This research will eventually help local farmers deal with the climate changes. It's all so interesting, but we have to head back to the Shamba. We are learning so much about farming in semi-arid areas. But there's still more information to come, right here on Shamba Shepherd. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa up here in Makueni. We are learning about how to farm in semi-arid areas and how to adapt to climate change. So let's get on with it. We are shaping up the Shamba of Joseph and Angela. They have been living here for 25 years and struggle with the changing climate as the rains have become unpredictable. A major problem in this area is access to water. It takes three hours a day for Angela and her friend Agnes. Agnes and Angela have to travel for three kilometers to fetch water. And you can see with this mode of transportation, it's tedious and it takes lots of lots of time. <laughs> now I'm safely back on the farm. Expert Julius is back to tell us about the importance of harvesting water. Water harvesting is a very important aspect. You find Angela has got this roof catchment. Yes. With this roof, roof catchment, we can harvest water uh -huh. for domestic use. Mm -hmm. We can also harvest water for use in, in a kitchen garden. Yeah. Yes. We can also harvest water for animals. So Angela, tell me, do you get a lot of water from that? Not so much. <laughs> Julius, not enough. Julius, what do you think of that? The truth is Angela has tried and to do more, she can still put more gutters and harvest nearly all the water. So what and she needs yeah. is more gutters. More gutters. Not forgetting that to harvest the water, there must be a where to reserve the water. Ah. That is a tank. Good. Because after harvesting, you have to store the water somewhere. By investing in some guttering and a tank, you can harvest water when the rains do come. Hey, Karis. Yes, sir. I see you got your toolbox ready. Yes. You got the hammer. Yeah. You got the nails. Yes. You got the overall. Yeah. You basically got everything. Yes. Good. Now let's get to work. Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome. 
By doing this, you'll save time and effort in collecting water. And that time can be spent working to make more money in your shamba. Joseph told us he has problems with his crops and soil, which is very unfertile. I have brought a man with a solution. We are introducing some varieties of crops which can do well in this arid area. For example, if we use um, sorghum, it will do well in the short rains and you'll get enough yield with the short rain we are experiencing. We can also use manure and fertilizers in our soil to improve it. You know, this type of new crops is introducing like many sorghum. Mm -hmm. We have forgotten how to, to plant it. I can show you the right variety certified seed of sorghum and the methods used to plant and even marketing program. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Then let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. Before planting, the land must be prepared. You can use a hoe or plow with oxen. Rows must be measured out at 75 centimeters. For every two meters, clear an area and make a line of soil between furrows to trap water. So what do you have for us here? I have a uh, sorghum seed, which is uh, certified by KFIS right. to enable good planting. Right, mm -hmm. for good crops, so you have to have certified uh, seeds. Yes. So and why sorghum? Sorghum is uh, a good resistant to drought, mm -hmm. and it takes um, short time to mature. How much do I need to plant in an acre? One acre, we are supposed to use four kilos. Of sorghum. I see you have everything is ready. Yes. So show us how to plant this sorghum. Okay. Make the furrows along the rows. Add farmyard manure along the rows. Then plant the seeds on top of the row. Make small holes of five centimeters. Remember to always use a certified seed. The holes should be about 20 centimeters apart. Dig a line along the side of the furrows. Make sure the seeds are covered and sprinkle DAP fertilizer. This is done separately so as not to touch and burn the sorghum seeds as it will destroy them. Carefully fold over the soil. You will need approximately 4 kilograms of seeds per acre. This planting needs to be done just before the onset of the rains. Germination takes about 5 days and then the sorghum will mature after 90 to 100 days. Sorghum is drought resistant, provides food security for the family and food for your animals. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask um, our expert? Yeah, I'll ask uh, where I will get the market to sell the, the sheet when, when I get the, in them in big quantity. Okay, now this is what we do. As smart logistic, we mobilize the farmers into a group. Then we allocate a collection center. So after all the farmers harvest, they bring their produce to the collection center where we buy from the collection center. Smart logistics run cluster groups. Cluster group initiatives were developed by IFDC to help groups of local farmers to get help and advice on planting and a guaranteed market for their crop. They have collection centers where farmers take their sorghum crop. It is weighed and they are paid by warehouse receipt or mobile money transfer. The new guttering is completed. And now when the rains do come, they can harvest water to use for cooking, washing and planting. It is important for farmers to share knowledge with each other. We walk with Joseph and Angela to the shamba of friend and neighbor Agnes. So Agnes, um, Joseph has learned so much about uh, how important it is to plant trees and he's here to show you how to do it. Would you like that? I would like it. Mm -hmm. And Angela has learned a better way of 
water harvesting, which I'm sure should be able to help you so that you can also improve on your methods of water harvesting. How do you feel about that? I will be very happy. Very happy? Very happy. Okay. Joseph teaches Agnes how to plant trees in the prepared pits, which are two feet wide and two feet deep. Mixing the topsoil with manure and filling the pit adding water and making a hole to plant the tree. Secure the roots with the soil and add more water. This will help soil fertility, soil erosion and supply timber and firewood in the future. And then Angela explains to her friend what she has learned about water harvesting. I'm sure Karis can find time to help put some gutters up. Back on Angela's chamber, Tony has more advice to help the ladies. I know another way to adapt to climate change, and that's to use the sun's energy to your advantage. And it's free. What are you studying? We are studying about the climate and the weather. Oh, what you learned at the research station. Yeah. What do you use at night when you're reading? The we use lamp. the kerosene nini lamp. lamp. Kerosene lamp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where do you, where do you get the, the paraffin from? From we the station. The station. Is yeah. it far? Yeah, it is far. Mm, and I'm cost you a lot of money. One yeah. kilometer and a half. One kilometer and a half. Yeah. yeah. And it's expensive. Yeah. It is ex expensive. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Now I've got something for you. Yeah. It's called a D light. Ah. Yes. A daylight? Ah. Daylight. Hey. Now, what we have inside here hey. is a lamp. Mm -hmm. And this lamp here uses solar energy. Yeah. Solar. That is power from the sun. Hey. Solar. Yes. Uh, so yeah. you do not need to buy yes. yeah, paraffin anymore once you use this. You can it's be able to read enough. with that. Yeah? It's yeah. bright enough for you. Bright yeah. enough. Good, good. Yeah. And it can last up to eight hours. Yeah. And all you need to do is charge it in the sun. Mm -hmm. And this is what you use. You place this panel outside. Mm -hmm. Another thing, where do you charge your mobile phone? Where do you take it for charging? You take it at the ships or near ships. At, at the market. And do they charge you for that? Yeah. About how much? 15 shillings. 15 shillings. 15 shillings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if I'm to tell you that this lamp can charge your phone. You want me to show you? Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> I've got something here. Mm -hmm. Now this is a charger for the phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. What you do, you attach it the same simple as you can touch the panel right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then you place it here. Is it charging? I, 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 it is charging. It is charging. It is easy to recharge outside using the solar panel. Using the D-Light solar lamp, the ladies can now study easily in a healthier way. Plus, there are no more fuel costs. And now, the ladies can also charge their phones for free.